Model steam engines, top tip time, part 19. I don't have time to do any video editing this morning because I have a studio recording session which will be starting very shortly. One of the regular jobs in my recording studio for quite a few years now has been composing, performing and recording the music for the Gateshead Metro Centre Metronome Show. Gateshead is a place in the northeast of England and if you would like more information about the metronomes, please type what is on screen into an internet search engine. I will be working on part of the 2023 summer show very shortly. It's time now for Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time, Part 19. Before I start, I'd like to thank a couple of my Patreon supporters who pointed out that the thread form is not metric, but 332nd Whitworth. And apparently this is a very early Stuart Model S50, and at the time this was made, that was the thread that they used. But that's no good to me, because most of these nuts are quite rusty, and therefore need replacing. And I very much doubt that a thread form such as 332nd Whitworth is going to be available in 2019. There's some good news and some bad news. One of the crosshead retaining bolts was already sheared off in the bed plate. The good news is I'm going to re-thread all of these 332nd Whitworth holes using a 7BA tap. The cylinder of a Stuart S50 is secured to the bed plate using just three small bolts. And once these were removed, the cylinder could be lifted off the bed plate. I'm using a wire brush in this Proxon motor tool. Health and safety warning, when using motor tools with wire brushes in them, you must always wear eye protection, because generally speaking, they do shed the bristles, which come off at a great speed. There's less centrifugal load on one of these type of wire brushes, and I do notice that they don't shed the bristles quite as much. But the other type, where the bristles stick out at 90 degrees to the shaft, shed bristles all the time. I need to take this much further than I have done so far. The purpose of the wire brush was really to clean up the heads of these bolts, which weren't particularly rusty. And in this clip, I'm very carefully removing them. And now I'm going to turn my attention to the other cylinder cover, and I need to remove this to have a look at the piston. I often use the term feel in my videos because I think it's very important. And in this case, when I'm removing these very small bolts, it's important to have an initial feel how tight they are into the cylinder before you remove them. And I've been very lucky, they're coming out easily. Because if one of these shears off, then that is pain. A little job turns into a bigger job. All of the bolts are loose now, and I'm taking the nut off the end of the piston rod. I'll put this in the box so I don't lose it. And the good news is, the piston is an excellent fit in the cylinder. It's absolutely perfect. In this clip, I'm carefully repositioning the gasket and making sure that I get the cylinder cover on the right way round. There's a faint mark on the inside of the cylinder cover which corresponds with the steam port. And now all I have to do is bolt the cylinder cover to the cylinder. I'm cleaning the gland nut and the rear cylinder cover in exactly the same way as I did when I cleaned the front cylinder cover. And while all parts of the cylinder are easy to get at, it's a good idea to pack the gland. I'm using a silicone rubber steam grade o-ring for this, with plenty of initial lubrication. The usual procedure for fitting gland nuts, tighten it all the way up, not too much, and then back it off half a turn. Then the friction is reduced, but it will still be a very effective seal. Now I've cleaned up the top of the crosshead, you can see the sheared off bolt. What I'm about to do is something that needs a bit of practice. As you can see, I'm using a centre punch. And I'm moving the centre punch and tapping it with a hammer in such a way that I end up with a deep centre pop exactly in the middle of the broken bolt. If I don't get this right, then there could be a big problem. Over now to the drilling machine, I'm using a tapping size drill for 7BA and it's going right down the centre of the bolt. If you look at the swarf that's coming off the drill, this is not cast iron swarf, it is steel swarf. And the job was successful. The next thing to do is to re-thread all the holes. Don't forget the holes are the wrong thread, I want them to be 7BA, so I'm going to thread all of them. But I'm being very careful with this one. Mainly because when I was initially re-threading this hole, it felt a little bit strange as I went part of the way down. And I didn't want to break off the tap, so I thought I'll do all the others and then revisit this one. 
The reason that the tap felt strange was initially it was going down into a hole that was drilled at tapping size, because that's where I drilled out the old broken bolt. Then suddenly, after it got through that, it broke into the original thread, which is a Whitworth thread, and it's slightly smaller than the tapping size for 7BA. Mystery solved, I continued to tap the hole all the way to the bottom. Breaking off a tap in a piece of work is seriously bad, and breaking this tap off in this hole would be extremely bad. What could I do about it? Let me think. No, it's definitely not a good idea to break off the tap in a piece of cast iron. Time now to work on the upper crosshead bars, which are not particularly well made and they're not well finished, but as I always mention, I try to do sympathetic restorations, and sometimes it would be quicker just to make new parts, but no, the idea is to keep the patina, or patina, of the original engine to a certain extent. And I think the secret is knowing just how far to take the cleaning process, so that when the engine's finished, apart from the paint job, which of course will be new, the other parts look like they have some age. I use my polishing spindle on this part as well as the sandpaper. It's always a good idea to poke a pin or something similar through the oilways to clear out any of the abrasive if you've been using a polishing spindle. Because the abrasive that you use on a polishing spindle is like a waxy substance and it gets everywhere. In this clip I'm checking the clearance between the two bars to make sure that the crosshead still fits and of course it does. Not the tightest of fits, but it should be okay. I wasn't happy with the finish on the connecting rod. I don't want it to look polished. I want it to look like a steel connecting rod on a full-size engine. And full-size engines seem to have a specific, common, universal finish. And by using some fine-grade wet-to-dry sandpaper, you can achieve the same effect on a model. This bit's not much fun. I'm trying to clean up the crank web using some wet-to-dry sandpaper, and it's taking ages. I'm going to rethink this and use an entirely different method. The best method would be to remove the crankshaft, complete with the crank web, which is only threaded onto the crankshaft, but I've tried that and it's on there very securely. And I feel that I would do so much damage to the parts by taking them off under pressure that I may destroy them. In the next episode, I'll show how I successfully cleaned up this part. Before doing that, though, I thought it was a good idea to remove the eccentric rod. And now I can spin the crankshaft complete with the eccentric without any fear of damaging the eccentric rod. If you watch the next episode in this series, you will see how I do the job. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.